All right, let's dive in. Today we're tackling a topic that I think we can all relate to, simplifying life. And you've given us not one, not two, but three different sources to help us unpack this. It's interesting, right? You're really trying to get a handle on this, looking at it from different angles. Exactly. It's like you're on a mission to declutter your entire life. And who doesn't love a good life declutter? It does feel good to hit that refresh button. It does. So we've got Be More With Less by Courtney Carver. And that one feels like, you know, that friend, you know, that friend who's got it all figured out. Yeah, it's like having them gently nudge you toward a simpler life. Then we've got our productivity guide, which is like this little handbook of practical tips, you know, almost like cheat codes for your life. And last but not least, we've got simplicity is the key. And this one goes a little deeper. You know, we, we're talking about the philosophy behind it all. Like, why is simplicity so important? Why do we crave it? It's not just about having a tidy junk drawer. It's about m making choices that actually, you know, mean something. It exactly. It's about intentionality. And speaking of intentionality, one thing that really resonated with you from Be More With Less was Courtney Carver's emphasis on this slow and steady approach. Like she's not about those crazy overhauls that leave you feeling even more stressed out. Nobody wants to create more chaos in the name of simplicity. Yeah. It defeats the purpose. Exactly. And you know what's interesting is that this whole slow and steady thing, it actually aligns with what we know about how our brains work. Like lasting change. It doesn't happen overnight. Unfortunately not, no matter how many times we wish it would. Right. It's about those small, consistent steps that add up over time. It's like building a muscle. You don't go from like couch potato to marathon runner in a day. It's all about building those habits one step at a time. Exactly. And, you know, Carver is a perfect example of this. Did you know it took her years to simplify her life? Years. I mean, it made sense, but years. Years. She's really walking the walk. But here's the thing. Each small change she made built this momentum. It was like each step made the next one a little bit easier, a little bit more natural. So it became less about forcing it and more about, like, it becoming who she was. Exactly. And you know what? That's actually what you were saying. You want sustainable change. You don't want a quick fix. You want something that lasts. I'm so over those quick fixes. They never work. Right. So out of Carver's 25 tips, we picked a few that felt super relevant to you, especially given, you know, you mentioned feeling overwhelmed with clutter at home. Oh, yeah. The struggle is real. Sometimes it feels like the stuff multiplies when I'm not looking. I know, right? Like you walk into a room and suddenly you can't remember why you even went in there. It's like that feeling when you open your inbox and it's just like too many emails. Oh, stop. My inbox gives me anxiety just thinking about it. Okay, well, let's talk about something a little less stressful. One of Carver's tips is her simplicity sanctuary idea. It's genius. So you pick one small space in your home. Maybe it's a shelf in your pantry or a drawer in your desk. Maybe it's that corner of your room where all the stuff ends up and you commit to keeping that one space totally clutter-free. Okay, so it's like a little haven of peace in a sea of stuff. Exactly, it's like a visual reminder, like, hey, simplicity is possible. Yeah, because when you're staring down a mountain of clutter, it's hard to even know where to start. So true. Okay, here's another tip from Carver. This one's called trade shopping for self-care, and I thought of you immediately because you're big on self-care, right? Oh, absolutely. Self-care is not selfish. It is not selfish. And here's the thing. Shopping can feel like self-care. Like, you're stressed. You buy something. You're bored. You buy something. But what Carver realized was that she wasn't actually buying things. She was trying to buy emotions. Like, trying to buy happiness or trying to buy a break from stress. Oh, that is so true. I've totally been there. And you know what? It doesn't work. Not in the long run. Yeah. You just end up with a credit card bill and a bunch of stuff you don't need. Which creates more stress. So Carver's tip is basically create a go-to list of self-care activities that actually nourish you, like taking a walk or calling a friend, reading a book, you know, anything that truly makes you feel good. And then the next time you're tempted to shop your feelings away, you check your list instead. So simple, but so smart. Mm -hmm. It's about breaking that cycle. It really is. Okay, one more tip from Be More With Less before we move on. This one might sound a little counterintuitive, but given your desire to feel less overwhelmed, I think you're going to love it. Carver is a big advocate for what she calls a do-nothing day. Do-nothing day. Um, in this day and age, who has time for a do-nothing day? I know, right? That was my first thought, too. Like, my to-do list never sleeps. But here's the thing. Carver isn't talking about being lazy. She's talking about intentional rest. Like, 
carving out an entire day where you resist the urge to be productive and you just mm -hmm. are no to do list, no errands, no obligations, just pure unadulterated downtime. That sounds amazing and also slightly terrifying. <laughs> like, can I even remember how to do nothing? Right. It's almost radical, isn't it? But think about how incredible that would feel to wake up with zero pressure to accomplish anything. Just pure, unadulterated downtime. It sounds luxurious. Like, that's a level of self-care I haven't even reached. And you know what? It's not just about relaxation. It's actually a strategic way to boost your productivity in the long run. It's like hitting the reset button on your brain. Exactly. And, you know, you mentioned wanting to understand the why behind simplicity, too. Hmm. Not just the practical stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm all about those aha, aha moments. Well, get ready, because our productivity guide dives into some fascinating science that I think you'll find really insightful. It's like uncovering the secret code to a simpler, more fulfilling life. Okay, you've got my attention. Lay it on me. All right, so have you ever heard of the Eisenhower Matrix? Yeah, it's that thing where you decide what's urgent, right? Yeah, sure. And important to help you prioritize. Exactly. But here's where it gets really interesting. We can use that same principle, not just for tasks, but for our choices in general. Like how many times do we say yes to things because we feel obligated or guilty, even when they don't really light us up inside? Oh, all the time. It's like I'm on autopilot sometimes, saying yes without even thinking. And that's where the Eisenhower matrix can be a game changer. It's like, wait a minute, is this thing actually urgent? Is it important? Or am I just telling myself it is? So it's not just about getting things done. It's about deciding what's actually worth our energy. Exactly. And guess what happens when we start being more intentional with our energy? We reduce that feeling of overwhelm. Because we're no longer bogged down by all that stuff that doesn't really matter. Precisely. And that frees us up to focus on what does. Which makes us more productive in the long run. It's like that saying, work smarter, not harder. Exactly. Now, while we're on the topic of productivity, there's another technique I want to mention. The Pomodoro technique. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that one. It's about working in those focused bursts, right? Yes. 25 minutes on, 5 minutes off. It does wonders for your concentration. Mm. But here's how it ties back to simplicity. It's about being more intentional with your time. Like, when you're working, you're fully present, fully focused. Mm -hmm. But then you give yourself permission to take a break, recharge, and come back even stronger. So it's not about cramming more into your day. It's about using your time more effectively. Exactly. And you know what pairs perfectly with the Commodoro technique? Courtney Carver's put your phone down tip. Remember that one from Be More With Less? Oh, yeah. I loved that one. It's so simple yet so hard sometimes. Right. I mean, our phones are like these little black holes of attention. So true. But when we can detach, even for short periods... It's amazing how much more present we become. And that presence, that intentionality, it's a key ingredient in creating a simpler, more mindful life. Absolutely. And you know, this ties into something really profound from simplicity is the key. It's this idea that true simplicity isn't just about owning less or doing less. It's about aligning our lives with our core values. It's about living in a way feels authentic to who we are. So how do we figure out what our core values are? I mean, it's not like they come with an instruction manual. That's true. But think of it like this. Your core values are like your guiding principles, the things that are most important to you in life. Maybe it's creativity, connection, adventure, learning. So it's about figuring out what makes us tick, like what really gets us excited to get out of bed in the morning. Precisely. And once you have a clearer sense of your values, you can start making choices that are more aligned with them. So it's not about deprivation. It's about making conscious choices that support the life we want to create. Exactly. It's about designing a life that feels good on the inside, not just one that looks good on the outside. I love that. But, you know, it's easy to talk about making changes, but sometimes our brains get in the way. Like those times when we know what we should do, but we just can't seem to make ourselves do it. Ah, uh, yes. You're talking about those pesky things called cognitive distortions. Okay, so tell me more about these cognitive distortions. What are they and how do we deal with them? So cognitive distortions, they're like these little lies that our brains tell us. They're these negative thought patterns that can really sabotage our efforts to simplify. Okay, so give me an example. Like, What would a cognitive distortion sound like in real life? Let's say you're trying to declutter your home and you're making amazing progress. You've tackled that scary closet You've sorted through years of paperwork, and then life happens. You miss a day of decluttering. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that little voice in your head pipes up and says something like, See? You'll never be organized. You're too messy. This will never work. 
And that, right there, that's a cognitive distortion. It's called all-or-nothing thinking. It's like we're seeing things in black and white, no shades of gray. Exactly. And those kinds of thoughts, they can really keep us stuck. So how do we stop those thoughts from sabotaging our efforts? How do we actually change those thought patterns? Well, the first step is simply becoming aware of them. Like, notice when those thoughts pop up. So it's like we're becoming detectives of our own minds. I love that. Exactly. Pay attention to those thought patterns. And then once you start to recognize them, you can start to question them. So instead of just accepting those thoughts as truth, we start to challenge them. Yes. Ask yourself, is this thought really true? Is it helpful? Is there another way to look at this situation? So we're basically putting those thoughts on trial. Exactly. And the more we do this, the easier it becomes to catch those distortions before they spiral out of control. And, you know, when we can quiet those negative thoughts, something really amazing happens. What's that? We create space for self-compassion. Ooh, self-compassion. I like that. Which actually feels like a perfect transition into our final section, your personalized simplicity toolkit. Yes. Let's give you some practical takeaways from our deep dive. Okay, so for starters, we have to include Carver's simplicity sanctuary idea. It's such a simple but powerful way to create a little haven of peace in your home. It's a great way to remind yourself that simplicity is possible. Exactly. And then there's the trade shopping for self-care tip. I think that one's going to be a game changer for a lot of people. It's about finding healthier ways to meet your needs. Yes. And let's not forget about the power of intentionality. Like, remember to check in with your core values regularly. Make sure your choices are aligned with what truly matters to you. Because when your actions are aligned with your values, that's when you experience true peace. It's like everything just clicks into place. So we've got actionable steps. We're being intentional. Yeah. What else? We've got to address those cognitive distortions. Yeah. How about we add mindful distortion detection to your toolkit? I like it. It sounds official. Right. So next time you catch yourself spiraling into those negative thought patterns, hit the pause button. Don't believe everything you think. Exactly. Acknowledge the distortion. Maybe even say it out loud. Hello, distortion. I see you there. Yes. And then challenge it. Ask yourself, is this thought really true? Is there another way to look at this situation? Love it. Okay. We've got actionable steps, mindful distortion detection. Anything else? We need a little productivity boost. How about the two-minute rule? Oh, yes. If it takes less than two minutes, just do it now. Exactly. It's amazing how much you can get done when you stop putting things off. Small steps, big impact. So there you have it. Your personalized simplicity toolkit packed with actionable advice and mind-shifting techniques to help you declutter your space, your time, and your mind. Remember, simplicity isn't about being perfect. It's about making choices that support your well-being and bring you joy. It's about creating a life that feels good from the inside out. And you know what? I have a feeling you're well on your way. Me too. So to all of you amazing listeners out there, we are so excited for you to embrace a simpler, more intentional life. Remember, even the smallest changes can make a big difference. And as always, keep those deep dive requests coming. We'll be back soon with more tools and inspiration to help you navigate the messy, beautiful journey of life.